Hi, it's unfortunate that I can't be with you today. Um, it's uh, as a result of circumstances far beyond my control. Uh, my apologies. Um, there's no place I'd rather have been than with you today, obviously, because um, Africans in diaspora, as far as I am concerned, are the, not just a, but the major component for change. Um, I am reminded of uh, forefathers of years gone by who left the shores of Africa, traveled to far reaches, learned what was going on, and came back and used those lessons to improve the lives of the common citizen. So like you, I um, decided to spend some time in the UK. Having finished my master's degree, I thought I'd stayed back and uh, marinate in the prosperity of the West. Um, it wasn't until my mother passed away in 2000 and I went back to her funeral that I realized that um, saying goodbye to Africa was not even remotely an option. I had to stay behind, I had to get involved, but I didn't know how. I didn't know what angle uh, I would come from. As time went on, I decided that it was, I guess, inevitable that Nigeria and Africa, by extension, had to have some taste of what I had experienced. Um, I needed to bring the light back to my people. I needed to explain to my people um, how things could be. And I needed to show them that things as they were currently did not have to be that way. So I realized that it was important that I spoke to them uh, from the heart, uh, showed them what was possible, um, gave them an insight into what could be. Um, you know, there's nothing that is more powerful and a mind that has seen beyond its initial um, scope. For me, once my mind had expanded, it was important that I spread that gospel to the rest of my, my, my brothers and sisters. And so in returning back to Nigeria, all I could think about was how to explain to my brothers and sisters what was possible. And of course, we did that. Now, many people who have come from diaspora back to Africa want change, but they don't know how to affect that change. Um, let me say to you that there are many ways in which you can do that. You can do it via pressure organizations. You can do it via political party systems. You can do it by NGOs. But what you cannot do is do nothing. Uh, many of us uh, send money back to our brothers and sisters. Um, that money you send back to them is their lifeline. But in addition to sending money back to them, you can send them information. You can send them what you might call tools for empowerment. And it's amazing what the internet provides now. It's amazing what you can see just by accessing social media. So all of us have a duty to impart the knowledge that we have learned in diaspora back to our countries and back to our continent. So I'm, I'm talking to you today not just as uh, individuals but as agents for change. I believe very strongly that if we're going to achieve anything in Africa, then it's the people like yourselves uh, who will be expected to step up to the plate to bat. Um, I, I want to give you a little bit of a story about myself so you get to understand about why you are so important to people like myself as well. Um, I think a, a typical story was that I was born in the United Kingdom. Um, I was seven years old when I left and went back to Nigeria. And it wasn't until I was in my 20s that I returned to do a master's in Imperial College. Having finished my master's, I decided to spend a few more years soaking up the opportunity and then eventually found myself back in Nigeria to a land which was significantly worse than when I had left it. Education had gone bad. The politics was in deterioration. Uh, the common man was dripping, uh, drifting much deeper into poverty and the prospects for leadership were looking quite dim. Uh, today, I would say the challenges still exist, but suddenly the people have awoken to a new awareness. Finally, they begin to realize that their politics uh, does not have to be left strictly to politicians, and that they too can play a role in achieving the kind of success, the kind of life that they would want, not just for them, but also for their children. So here I am, back in Nigeria, after several years away, and suddenly it's not a place to be so proud of anymore. And the politics is in chaos, uh, poverty is on the rise, 
Um, the educational system is backward. Um, the future isn't bright. And call it exposure, but suddenly having now seen the way things should be, um, I was no longer satisfied with the way things were. Um, so immediately within me, the only thing I could think of was how do I improve the circumstances of the ordinary man? How can I show them that this isn't the way it should be? That was a challenge for me. Um, so I think sometimes you need to step out of the problem to really truly appreciate it. And um, you really would be struggling to find peace when you don't fully understand the war. Um, so the people in the UK, uh, the people in Europe, the people in the United States of America cannot necessarily solve the problems of Nigerians. But Nigerians may not necessarily understand that they have a problem. So what I see is a synergy between the two. And Africans in diaspora provide the perfect, I believe, recipe for a solution. Um, like I said, we've seen examples before now, Kwame Nkrumahs of this world, the Namdi Azikwes, the Obafemi Awolowos. All these have been Africans who went out, got exposed to what was and what could be, and came back and made Nigeria and the rest of Africa what it is. And they started this process, but it's not for one man or for one generation. It's for all of us and for generations coming to perfect what the others have started. And I want to challenge us. I want to say that having known what you know, having been exposed to what you have seen, this is an opportunity for you to stand up and be counted. Um, pointing the finger uh, is not really going to solve the problem. This is a collective responsibility. All hands need to be on deck. Here you are looking at the scenario and it's obvious to anyone who looks at it that nobody can lead the change better than the Africans in the diaspora. Some of you would ask how. How do I get involved? Yes, uh, politics is too important to be left to politicians, but how do I, as an individual, get involved in the politics of my, my country? Well, to be honest with you, that's very easy. Aside from influencing other people to get involved, you yourself can get involved. Many political parties now have online registration. Thanks to technology, thanks to the digital age, a political party that does not expose its membership uh, to online registration falls foul or stands the chance of falling foul of, um, of, of the people's wishes and aspirations. So to that extent, uh, many political parties allow participation from distance. And that to me is the beginning of a different type of politics. Yes, the diasporans cannot vote, but very soon they will. In the meantime, they can get involved. They can play a role in the political organizations that exist within their communities. If via that role their voices can be heard, then slowly and surely individuals can begin to speak to their families, speak to their communities, and of course speak to their regions, ultimately speak to their countries. And ultimately, I believe that Africans in diaspora can speak to their continent. So that's how. There's no excuse, one way or the other, we all have to get involved. Let me also add that my background is not politics. I'm a petroleum engineer by training. Um, having finished my first degree in petroleum engineering, I acquired a master's degree in mineral resources engineering from Imperial College. I went on to then study project management and I have degrees in information technology. Now, the combination of these skills meant that I had several options outside of politics. If I wasn't doing petroleum engineering, I could have gotten uh, well paid just as a project manager. If I wasn't doing project management, I could have done and actually ended up doing uh, very well for myself in information technology. Now, by doing all this, I gave myself options. That meant that if one door closed, I was able to try to make another door open. Now, many of our brothers and sisters don't have these options. And my entry into politics now, as I said, is simply because politics is too important to be left to politicians. For me, it's important to show people what is possible. And I've said it many times before, that if the average politician has been unemployed, then there is no way they're going to come into politics 
and solve unemployment because they don't know how. You cannot attract business if you don't speak the language of business. So I think that no matter what field of endeavor you're in, it's important that you take that field of endeavor, take your lifetime experiences and bring them back into the arena of politics so that you can expand your prosperity beyond just yourself and your family, but to the wider community. Now, as an entrepreneur doing business in Africa, I must say that it is a challenge. But that challenge is becoming less and less so, and the opportunities are becoming more and more so. So really, Africa is definitely the place to do business. But in doing business in Africa, one thing I have concentrated on is human capacity development. It's not just about making money. It's not just about the dollars and the cents. It's not just about the pounds and the pence. It's important that we leave something behind. So for the entrepreneurs who are not necessarily African but are interested in Africa, I say to you, come. Africa is a place which you can develop your talents, develop your skill sets, but also leave something behind for posterity. Everybody knows now that we're in a global village. What happens in remote far reaches of Mombasa are not too different from what is going on in Manchester. The world is interconnected, the world is interlinked, now more so than ever. And so if any of us feels it in our hearts to leave something behind for prosperity, then Africa is definitely a good place to start. They're young, enterprising people. They're people who have so much opportunity ahead of them, but all they're looking for is somebody to believe in them, somebody to give them some kind of guidance. And my, my happiness and my hope is that I exist in a continent which is at the threshold of a major opportunity. Um, what we lack and what we've had a challenge with is leadership. But I believe that if um, we want to change the rules of the game, then there's a likelihood that we need to change the players. The style of play will always be the same if we carry on with the same tired, beat, old politicians who we describe as analog when we're in a digital world. There's a need for a new style of politics and to do that, the diaspora has a major role to play. Um, I, I want to finish by saying that for whatever it is worth, uh, the idea that one person cannot make a difference has been proven wrong by too many that have come before us. Each and every one of you has a role to play, a responsibility, in fact a duty to play in emancipating Africa. Uh, yes, my, 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 my constituency is Nigeria, but I think by extension, all of us understand that you can't simply just focus on your own backyard, that we have to work together to achieve this. Now, in doing this, it may be that you see a shred of light or hope in a Nigerian. Or it might be somebody from Kenya, or it might be somebody from Zimbabwe. Either way, all of us need to find a way of working together. My experiences may help your experiences and yours may also help mine. If we start to work together as Africans, if we start to identify amongst each other, you know, those little potential nuggets that exist, then maybe we can expand to a brighter future for the whole of Africa. I want to plead with all of you that um, we should find common ground. As much as I am not there today, you can be rest assured that I will be in and out of the United Kingdom severally and the rest of Europe over the course of the next few months. And I hope to meet with each and every one of you at the earliest possible opportunity. Of course, Sylvie has my details and she will know how to reach me. I want to thank all of you, uh, especially for coming out this evening to uh, attend this event. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be there, but I assure you that I'm with you in spirit. And I want to say thank you again to Sylvie and the rest of the organizers uh, for having me, uh, giving me this opportunity to speak to all of you. I look forward to another opportunity. And until then, I wish you the best. Thank you, and have a good evening.